little packet of learning Mimeo technology. I gave you two things that I think you're really going to want to hang on to. The first one is, it's called a hardware reference card, so it tells you what all the buttons on your Mimeo view are, what everything does. Mm -hmm. And then there's a software reference card. So they're the first pieces of paper in this little handout. So do you understand that the Mimeo view is hardware and software? You control the Mimeo view from your computer. Okay. So let's take a quick look at it. The Mimeo view is okay to grab and carry around like this. How do I know that? The rep told me. Mm -hmm. And so you can carry it like this. This is completely flexible. These are also completely flexible. They're meant to be that way. This one isn't broken. Kelly's going, oh my god, that's my view. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know we had a view that looked like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This actually has one plug. And the plug literally is just um, a USB cable. So it gets its power and communication from your computer. So you have to plug it into your computer in order to use it. That's why I said to Krista, can we please get some USB hubs because we're going to be plugging in a lot of these USB things. And so she said, well, yeah, let's get that. So thank you, Krista. <laughs> so the way that end, so I'm going to plug it into that end, and then I'm just going to plug this. And actually, I'm going to plug this into the hub and then the hub into the computer. I'm going to recommend to you that you plug the Mimeo one, the receiver that we talked about this afternoon, plug that into the computer directly. See, these take power, right? When you're plugging USB, they're actually providing power to that device. And some devices do not run well or at all if you run them through a hub. So you have to directly connect them to your computer. Okay, so try it. If you have any trouble, you'll know what's going on. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just going to plug this guy in. Now, the way that the Mimeo view works is you have to have this piece of software, which we're going to install a little bit later, um, hopefully before we go to lunch. Oh, yeah. And the software is called Mimeo Studio, and it holds the software that runs the Mimeo view camera. So, um, I brought a couple things just so we could look at it under the camera. And so I'm going to go, I'm going to access that software. It's called View. So now, um, this is just a regular old document camera. I'm looking at some 3D objects. I've got lighting if I want it. You know, you may not want it, depending upon what you're looking at. <laughs> so, um, the difference between this and the Elmo brand document camera that most of us have in our classrooms is this um, has the obviously the flexibility. Um, it connects directly to your computer and you control it and can do some other things, which I'll show you in just a second. Um, but then also it has a microscope adapter, science teachers. So it comes with a, an adapter. You just hook it on the top and you're ready to rock and roll. That's what that means. Yeah. Okay. Yep. <laughs> so what I want you to pay attention to First of all, you can see that I was adjusting things, and I can turn the lights off and on if I want to. I can do what's called an autofocus, and that's what I just did right there. It also has an autofocus on the gooseneck, which I'll wait until it gets done. So I can do it from here or from here if I need to. Um, I also, I'm going to grab my that's okay. I'll just type from here. Okay, so I also can control it from inside my software program. So I launched that view software. You saw me go up and I said view. So I have all these tools at the bottom here. If I want to turn the lights off, like some of us, we're going to have really good lighting in our classroom. We don't need the lights. Or we're displaying something that might have a glare. You might not want those lights on. You just click on that little bulb and it shuts the lighting off on it. So might look better, might not. Okay. You also have the auto tune or auto focus, the same, kind of the same thing as you have available to you on the base of your document camera. You can control
control brightness and contrast. So if I think it's not bright enough, or I need more contrast, I can adjust those two features. So I can really make it bad. <laughs> That's the problem I'm having the most with, because yesterday I was dissecting squid. And I was, sorry. I was, <laughs> and squid's mostly white on the inside and shiny stuff, and I was really having a hard time getting it to show for the kids when I was showing them the demo before they started hacking at it themselves. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm having problems with the brightness contrast, I think. I well, and two, did you have your lights on or off? I tried them both. Okay, and I think angle and all of that's going to make a difference as well as I tip it all over. But yeah, brightness and contrast, that's you want well. less brightness when you've got that kind of glossy surface. And, and you tend to want more contrast as well. That's going to pull those colors. I can rotate these guys around, which wouldn't really do anything at this point. But I can actually lock this in. So my freeze button on my projector is the same thing. I can freeze. Now if I move these. Whoop, whoop, <laughs> um, and then I unfreeze it. Why is that important, English teachers, do you think? <laughs> Or anybody that puts text yeah. under the screen. Have you ever been reading material and you put it under your document camera and you flip the page? Uh -huh. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you take, and I promise I will not make you read from transforming professional development into student results, <laughs> but just to give you the idea, If I have this set of text under here, and I'm having the students read it, and then it's time to change the page, I can either click here in my software, or I can click there on my base, and I freeze it, and then I can turn the page, I can get it where I need it, and I can unfreeze it. And then they're not getting that whole, Ooh. yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. My kids like that feeling. They say, Don't you this is your yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, move your hand. Yeah, yeah. Or you could magically like underline verbs. Motion. They wouldn't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go. Magically oh, yeah. underline a verb. They, they wouldn't know. That's like, amazing. Oh, yeah. Spending all this time underneath it, you start looking at your nails more. I know. Oh, there's dirt under there. Yeah, pretty soon. You're like, hold on, kids. <laughs> Who wants to come up here and, and manipulate because you don't want your fingers under there? Mine are getting old. You're so. gross. She's a nice manicure. <laughs> so you can also zoom in if you want to, and notice how it's kind of working that autofocus mm -hmm. as best as it can. Mm -hmm. You can zoom out if you want to. You also can put up your tools from the Mimeo, and you can annotate. So if I wanted to draw a line under the red flower or something silly oh, cool. like that, you know. Mm -hmm. I've literally yeah, turned yeah, this into an image that I can manipulate. Do you see the difference between this document yes. camera and the other document yeah. camera? Do you see the possibilities of what you can do? I mean, just yeah. looking at what we've done so far. I like the idea that if you could, um, like when I was doing the squid yesterday, it would have been nice to be able to freeze that. I didn't know I could do that. I could freeze that so that when I bump it, because I bump things, yeah. it wouldn't have, I could have frozen that and then done the lines off and then talk about what they were. Yeah. Absolutely.